Okay, so for this one, we are talking about line plots, also known as dot plots and histograms, which are actually really useful ways of looking at information, looking at data. So looking at this line plot, the way a line plot is structured, I have all my possible values, my range. The lowest score I can have is 35. The highest one I can have is 50. This is um, scores on a math project. Hypothetical, of course. So the lowest score possible is 35. The highest score possible is 50. Now, each of these represents a single score. So that means one kid got a 35, one kid got a 36, one got a 38, one got a 40, two got a 42, one got a 44, two got 45s, none got a 46, etc. Three, three kids got a 50, apparently. So, first question, how many data points are in this, da are, are in this dot plot? I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I have 15 plots. Um, to determine the mean of this, I'm actually going to take a calculator and figure that out. The way I find the mean, of course, is I add up all my total and then divide by how many samples I have. So here, I have 35 plus 36 plus 38 plus 40 plus 42. I have a second 42 plus 44, 45, another 45, 47, 48, 49, and then three 50s. My total should be 661. I have 15 samples, so I divide by 15. I should get this whopping number, 44.06, and that's going to repeat to infinity. That's my mean of this data set. To find the median, I actually just count in. I count till I get to the center. So I do a left, then a right, left, then a right. I can also count in doubles, triples to make myself go faster. So I have one here, one here. I also do two. I have two here. One, two, three. One, two, three. Now I have one here, one there. My last one remaining is my 45 right there. Yeah. To make a line plot, I take all of this information and I make a line plot. So I make a line down here. I set a lower limit and an upper limit. My lower limit is my lowest number in my set. In this case, it's going to be 16. My highest number is going to be 25. So I have 16 to 25. That means I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I have 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. I have up to 24. So that's going to be eight new numbers. I need eight lines. One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Label them like so. Now, for every time that the piece of data occurs, I make an X. So I have one sixteen. I can mark a sixteen, cross off at sixteen. I have a twenty-two, cross off a twenty-two, put an X at twenty-two. Twenty-five, this is going to continue until I'm out of data sets. I'm going to finish it quickly so we can move on and not waste anybody's time. Remember, if I have more than one, they stack on top of each other so I can see how much of each there actually are. It's a weird, fun little math game I play to see like, which one's winning the race. I know it's really cheesy and really nerdy and total math teacher move, but I actually love it. It's one of those sick kind of weird math things I love doing. I have 19 here. Another 25 and a 24. So I have a lot at 19, nothing at 23, and then a bunch kind of everywhere else. It says, what's the mode? The mode is the one that occurs the most times. It's going to be 19, and that's my answer. Now, for histograms, they're a little different. Right here, I have this. I have the time to get ready. The number of students and the number of minutes that they took to get ready. I have a lot who took between 30 and 39 minutes. A couple that took 44, nine, a couple that took 20, 29, none that took that long, and then 60, 69, there are a couple. So, which interval indicates the answers that most students gave? Most students put in the 30 to 39 range. How many students answer the question? I have a total of three here, I have seven here, two here, zero here, and three here. So, I have three plus seven is 10. Plus 2 is 12, plus 3 is 15. 15 students. How many students take less than 40 minutes to get ready? Less than 40 is all of these. I have a total of 10 that took less than 40 minutes. Why might no students have given the answer of 50, 59 minutes? Hmm, that's a good question. More of a pondering question. 
um, you could say a lot of things about the way the way people get ready in the morning. Um, that's an awkward amount of time. Um, no one likes taking an hour. They like to take a little bit more, a little bit less. There's could be any answers in here. Um, yes, to make our own, it's a totally different thing down here. Let me zoom out. Here I have my data set. It goes anywhere from 8 to 68. So I'm going to make even intervals that go by tens, actually. going So I have down here, 0 to 10. I have another one that's going to go 11 to 20. Another one that's going to go 21 to 30. Another one that's going to go 31 to 40. Another one's going to go 41 to 50. Another one's going to go 51 to 60. And the last one's going to go 61 to 70. Now I'll just mark off how many students are going to say. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now I count. I have one student who has eight, so that's between zero and ten. I have one student. Between eleven and twenty, I have one, two, uh, three, four. I have four students. So I make up to four and then try to shade it in. Between twenty-one and thirty, I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I have six. I have a lot in that range. Going up to six and then drawing a bar. And here, this is not perfect by any means. I'm not an artist, but it's okay. Between 31 and 40, I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I also have six there. Woof, that's a lot. I have six students between 21 and 30. I have another one. forgot this one. Gonna, I'm actually going to have seven students in here now. Between 41 and 50, I have that one, that one. That's two, three, three students. Between 51 and 60, I have one, two students. And I have one, two, three students between 60 and 70. It should look like that. That's how you make a histogram. Um, they are super useful. And you're going to see them a lot throughout life. So thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it.